Okie dokie. Um, so as I said, I'm, I'm very excited about this project. Um, I hope that you guys will be very excited too by the end of this presentation and when you really start to think about what we're going to be doing. Um, uh, I, I think that in order to communicate with me during this presentation, I'd like you to use your voice as much as possible, but I would love for you to communicate in whatever way you're comfortable with. So that means you can put it in the chat, you can use your voice, or you could even maybe email me later if you have a question or you have something you wanted to share with me that you didn't want the whole class to know, and that's totally okay. And thank you, Athena. Uh, my background is Hokusai's the great wave or the wave and that's kind of goes along with the theme today of our presentation so the title of the show the title of the experience we're not even calling it a show right now we're calling it a visual arts experience is called message in a bottle but you guys are actually going to have the opportunity to either make a message in a bottle or make a time capsule and we're going to be sharing a little bit of, of what those two things are and also a little bit of history of what, um, you know, the background of those two things. So this is a big project just like our Rules of Abstraction project. So there's a lot of different students participating in this um, exhibition, even the middle schoolers. So I've invited my sixth grade, in, sixth grade intro to visual art class to participate. I'm just turning my lights on here. Um, to participate conceptually um, they're not going to be in the same exhibit as you but I will involve them in some way with the project so it's you guys it's photography again and if you're in any of these other classes you will be doing and making this concept um, but in completely different mediums and materials so drawing to painting to 2d digital art animation and then like I said intro to visual arts so message in a bottle. So this is a visual arts experience. So we've really had to get creative, right, with how we display and how we share the work that we're sharing this year because we're mostly virtual. Um, hopefully you guys will be back on campus pretty soon, um, but that we still have some kind of regulations and rules around having a big exhibition with a lot of people coming. So sometimes when you're faced with sort of a challenge in your creative person, as we all are, right? We have to come up with ways of, of still doing what we wanna do. Um, but I think that we've created some, some really interesting and exciting new ways to share our work. So that website was, and we're gonna keep stepping into it and making it bigger. So for Rules of Abstraction, we did that cool website and everyone had their own page. And we had a big Zoom event and we did augmented reality and virtual you know, exhibition spaces. But for this one, it's going to be more a community project. So you're going to be making bottles to send out into the world in, in different ways. Um, or you're going to be making a time capsule that you're going to bury and send to your future self. Um, and we're going to be trying to share these things via a couple social media outlets like maybe Facebook and Instagram too. So we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So time capsules, what is a time capsule? We'll talk about that as well. So you're gonna make one or the other. You're not making both. Um, unless you're feeling really ambitious and you wanna do both, um, for the time period of this project, you probably will only have time to make one. So a bottle or a time capsule. So a message in a bottle and a time capsule, these are both vehicles of communication. So think about that for a minute, a vehicle of communication. So I'd like you, with your voice or in the chat or in an email, um, can you think of any other examples of vehicles of communication? So in, take a second to think about that. And I'd like you to share. Envelopes, what else? This is just general. A vehicle for communication. Pigeons. <laughs> That's the first one that people come up with all the time is carrier pigeon messages. Yep. Internet. What else? Think think bigger. Think outside of the box. Email. Maybe think beyond your computer. Telegram. Think beyond your time. Right? Think historically. Mail. Language. That's a great one, Katie. Art, yes, Susanna. 
Thank you for saying that. Uh, Zoom, yep, oral storytelling. That is a wonderful one, yes. Yeah, poems, haikus, that, oh, I love haikus. Anything else? Music, yep. Okay, so yes, these are all beautiful examples of um, vehicles for communication. So a message in a bottle. So I want you to really think about what your message is going to be and choose the vehicle based on the message that you want to send. And, and send, who are you sending that message to? That's a good question as well. So that message in a bottle um, traditionally has been sent out via water, right? You drop it in the ocean and it ends up somewhere. You don't even know where it's going to go. I saw, I watched a video in my research for this project of a man that I had claimed to have put 4,000 messages into the ocean and he received 3,000 messages back. And this is how he did it. This is totally pollution, by the way. So I'm not really advocating this, but he collected those juice, big juice bottles and he made flyers and on the flyer was his address. And he said, I'm so-and-so, please send me a message via mail, snail mail. Um, and he stuck it in the bottle and like every once a week he goes out and he like studies the ocean currents. And then he'll throw these bottles out into the ocean and he claims to have gotten 3,000 um, letters back and he even had examples of letters and people just telling stories about their life So I just thought wow that is really kind of a neat way of communicating with the world, right? That is very very ancient um, So for this project um, You could put it into a body of water if you wanted to um, We could do something simpler like maybe a campus hunt Right, so like a treasure hunt where you hide your bottle somewhere and then somebody else finds it or you could send it out into the community. You know, you could door drop it. You could hide it in someone's yard. You could throw it over your fence, you know, your neighbor's fence. Um, just ways, can you guys think of ways that you could get this bottle out into the world anonymously? Let's put it in the chat or share with our voice. What are some ways that we could get this message out anonymously? Floated down the Sacramento or American River <laughs> pigeons, you guys like the pigeons. Um, public park, ship it to random address. Yep, you could do that. Any other ideas? One of my middle schoolers, they're doing this project, dropping someone's mailbox. She said, I'm scared to drop it off at someone's front door so I'll get arrested. <laughs> and I said, oh no. You know, we're so used to getting door drops because of COVID, you're not gonna get arrested. Give it to a stray cat. <laughs> you could strap it on the, the back or the collar. Hide it in your house for the, the next people, yeah. You could bury it, throw it, you could throw it at someone, yes. Well, don't, you could get arrested for that. bury it in the sand. You don't want that person to know who you are. So I'm going to ask that you do this if you don't have to, if you don't want to, but inside your bottle, I want you to put a hashtag for an Instagram account that we're going to be creating. So if that person finds it, you know, in a timely manner, they can um, take a photo with the bottle and hashtag, post it and hashtag it to our account. So there might be a way for you guys to actually see who gets your bottle. Bury it in the sand at the beach. That's a good one. I like that one. Okay, so great ideas. These are all things that you can do. All right, so these are things I want you to ponder. You don't have to answer them and type them out. Just think about it, um, consider it before you start your project. So if you're gonna be doing the message in a bottle, um, who would you like to receive this message? So I know it's hypothetical, but it might be a good idea to think about it because if you want it to be so wide open that you just like have no idea then you, put, you could put it into the ocean, right? But if you wanted to be specific about your community, like maybe you live in, maybe you live in Oak Park, right? And you're like, I want an Oak Park person to find this. So go to, go to a garden in Oak Park and hide it in the bushes or something, you know? So you could really be very pointed about 
who might receive this message. Or if you wanted a child to find it versus an adult or something. I mean, don't be like creeping through like playgrounds and stuff, but you know, you could be very pointed about where you hide your bottle or where you put your bottle. Um, so how would you like to send it? And we talked about that just a minute ago. What would you like to say or give or create? So your bottle is going to be created by you. Okay, you're not just going to grab a glass bottle. You're going to make this out of clay. So you can you can put a message in actually on the bottle. You can sculpt it in any way you want, carve into it, paint on it, add messages onto the physical bottle itself, as well as put one inside. So it's really up to you. Um, are you okay with letting your creation go? Okay, so if you choose this method, you will not, after you make this beautiful thing, you have to let it go. You have to give it away. So you have to be okay with that. Um, and then just consider what your bottle might look like. So if you choose to do a time capsule, there's other considerations. So where are you going to bury it? That's a really good question. So this message really is meant for your future self. So this is a different kind of message. Your future self hopefully will get this message. Um, when are you going to dig it back up again? So that's a good question. If you don't give it enough time, right, then it's going to be a little bit like anticlimactic. You're like, oh, I remember a year ago I put that in this box. But if you wait, you know, 10, 15, 20 years and you open that box, you're just probably going to bring you to tears. Like, oh my gosh, I remember that year. And this year, man, we're going to remember this year. I mean, this year has been intense, right? Or you could move and totally forget you buried that thing. And a hundred years from now, someone's going to find it and they're going to learn about who you are right now. And that's pretty neat. Um, some other same considerations. Um, how long do you think it should, you should wait to open it? Um, are you going to include any technology? And do you think that that technology could actually be read in the future? Um, would you consider writing a letter to your future self? That could be a pretty poignant letter if you express how you're feeling right now um, about yourself in the world and you read it 10, 15 years from now. It could be pretty meaningful. Um, how you decorate it. Right, you're going to make this yourself. And then also, how do you represent your cultural heritage? So this is a really important one because you are, you are who you are, right? And your history and your background and your ancestral um, you know, mark on the world is really important. So that should be included in some way in your, in your message. And then where are you going to bury it? So, I, you know, I rent a house, so I'm not going to bury it in my rented house because I'll probably have to dig it up in a year when the landlord decides to sell the house, right? So I probably would bury it where my mom is because she's been there for 20 years, probably will be there for a long time, and um, if, if we sell that property, I know I can go dig it up. So a very important element to this project is time, okay, the time. The time in between when you send that message out and someone gets it. Or the time in between you're bearing your capsule and you digging it back up again. A lot of time capsules, capsules actually have on the top of it, it says, you know, who made the time capsule. And then it says, do not open until year 2065 or something like that. Um, so you could put a date on your capsule. If someone else finds it, they're not allowed to open it until a certain year. You know, whether or not they follow that rule or not is, is you know, totally up to them. How does time factor into my artwork? So I really want you to consider that. It's, it's important. Four things, your message, your vehicle, your form, because you're making this, and time. So history, communicating through time. So communicating with future civilizations through leaving things behind is ancient, okay? This is not something Americans created when the time capsule was created. This idea is an ancient one. So consider the fact that many archaeological finds and the reason why we even understand what occurred in the past is because the people in them intentionally chose to bury or leave behind something of their culture. Um, so we're going to look at a couple examples of this. Um, and that being said, some of these ancient burial grounds are not about 
a time capsule for living people to find in the future. Um, they also, a lot of them had more to do with the afterlife and their spiritual beliefs in what was going to happen to them in the afterlife. And a lot of them wanted the artifacts and the things that, that belonged to them. To, they wanted to take them into the afterlife or uh, create them to protect, to be protected. So I've spoken about this before in ceramics. Ceramics two students, you know about this already. This is on my bucket list. Um, this is the Chinese terracotta army. I think that some of the students, didn't some of the students that went to China, didn't they get to see this? I don't remember um, if they got to see this. Did anyone um, know anyone that went to China for One Voice? You learned about it from Mrs. Green, I know. And yes, Pink Floyd is great. I've, I've been a long time Pink Floyd fan. I'm gonna hop up and turn my light on. I'm not going anywhere. So yeah, so Mrs. Green talks about this. Um, it's on my bucket list to go here and see this someday. So this is the Chinese terracotta army, and it's a collection of soldiers and other other figures um, that was buried with this emperor, the first emperor of China, and we're going to learn how to pronounce his name. Qin Shi Huang. Qin Shi Huang. Okay. Qin Shi Huang. Okay, so the Emperor Qin Shi Huang um, created this army to, and it included more than 8,000 life-size clay soldiers, 130 chariots, 520 horses, 150 cavalry horses, and other official figures, acrobats, strongmen, and musicians. So basically the whole village and an entire army to protect him in the afterlife. And these are incredible figures because to this day we still cannot figure out in the time period that these were built how this was done. I mean it's just like seems like an impossible feat because you would think that they were press molded. If we can get clay technical here, they look like they could be molded and just recreated very quickly, but they're not. They've discovered that they're not press molded, that they were actually all hand built. And if you look at and study their faces, a lot of, a lot of artists and scientists and archeologists have put their faces in like a database and studied them and they're all different. They're all hand done. Um, another incredible thing about this is that they were all painted with colored dyes or colored pigments. And they discovered this by, you know, high-tech study of the surface of these sculptures. So here's some recreations. So this is like one of the world's largest time capsules. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, this one is near and dear to my heart because I've been to this site before on a road trip. Um, this is called the Seat Mound. It's Native American. So a mound is a hill, right? Um, this is considered an earthwork. But really what it is, it's a burial ground. It's a burial ground. So this was created by the Hopewell culture, 100 BC to 500 AD, and was excavated outside of Chilajote, Ohio, 1925 to 28. And it uncovered that this culture was very, very skilled at making artifacts or things out of metal. There were a lot of really beautifully created copper and mica metal artifacts buried in these crypts here. Um, so the history of the message in a bottle. A um, lot of different reasons why people have sent messages out. Um, some of them are distress messages, like maybe they were stranded on a desert island um, and they just needed help. Um, a lot of scientific studies of ocean currents. So the Navy sent out a lot of bottles. Uh, memorials or sending ashes on final journeys so people that have passed away uh, messages from doomsdayers so a doomsdayer is someone that believes that the end of the world is nigh right <laughs> the end of the world is near and they need to send a message I don't know who they're sending the message to if the end of the world's gonna end but that's just it's something that happens um, pen pals so the man I was telling you about that sends the bottles out He's looking for pen pals, these people to write back to him and communicate with him. Love letters, right? Maybe you're searching for your person and you send a message out into the universe saying, come find me. 
um, biodegradable cards and wooden blocks. This is the thing, even though I don't understand it, I, I really get that it's really bad to throw stuff into the ocean, right? Because it's just horrible, horrible, horrible for those sea creatures and our and our bodies of water um, and our planet to be throwing things into the ocean. But I don't quite understand. There's not going to be a lot of longevity to a biodegradable message because it's meant to biodegrade. So I guess it depends on how long it it's going to take to disappear. All right, so here's a couple um, historical MIBs. Uh, 310 BC, Greek philosopher Theophrastus studying water currents to prove that the Mediterranean Sea was formed by the inflow of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, this next one cracks me up. Uh, I think it's kind of pompous and hilarious. Uh, 1580s, Queen Elizabeth appoints uncorker of ocean bottles that may have contained messages from British, British spies. So if you were not the uncorker, then you were accused of being a spy and sent to death. This is a possible myth. Um, this one is very sad and um, heartbreaking, but also very poetic. 1784, Chunosuke Matsuyama, a Japanese seaman on a voyage to find buried treasure, was stranded as a castaway on an island with his crew. As they died off from starvation, he carved a message on a piece of wood and set it to sea inside a bottle. 151 years later, a seaweed collector found it and washed up ashore in the village that he was born in. So that's the poetic part about it that he was stranded on, a, on an island, his crew was all dying off, and he sends a message, it's probably saying, hey, help me, or goodbye, and it ends up in his home village. Very, very poetic. Uh, this top one here is one of the oldest found messages in a bottle, um, the actual physical one, right, not just a story about one. Um, West Australia, it had been drifting 132 years from a German ship dated back to 1886 and of course it was pretty common to see these um, experiments in ocean currents and shipping routes. This one brings a tear to my eye because I just get so verklempt over the Titanic. I don't know about you guys but um, I, I don't know. The Titanic just the thought of it just like makes me want to cry. Just all these people just sinking <laughs> to the bottom of the ocean. Um, so this message was found and it says from Titanic, goodbye all, Burke of Glenmere Cork. And this is the even more poetic part about it. It was washed ashore just miles from his family home in 1913. So, um, kind of similar to the seaman story, right? So, and this is certified as a real, a real thing, and it's in one of the Titanic exhibitions. Um, what does Naomi say here? I watched the Titanic recently sinking with Jenny. It is, it is, and it's so, so tragic, tragic to think about people desperately trying to communicate with their loved ones. All right, so your bottle will be made out of clay, but the form can be anything you want it to be. It doesn't have to look like a glass bottle. Um, it can be really anything. So here's some examples throughout history. This is actually a message in a bottle, illustration of one. This one is just a bobbing piece of plastic that, that bobs on the surface of the water and the plastic hangs down and then there's a little message inscribed underneath. Um, other just bottle forms, basic bottle forms. Uh, the first glass bottles were produced around 100 BC in Southeast Asia, just a little fact. So this one I want you to ponder for a second. Form has meaning. So consider that the form you choose can also have meaning. So in the chat or with your voice, um, what do you think I mean by that? Form has meaning. Look at my examples here. The form you choose has meaning. What does that mean? Um, so Naomi says, form um, has rather uh, obvious and more subtle messages. So the fish form relates to the ocean or fish. Uh -huh. And Mary Lena says, I guess the way you sculpt it can be made for a specific purpose. Yep. So the form can be meant for a purpose. 
Itsy says the form might impact who chooses it. Uh -huh. I like that. So you're imagining that your bottle is being chosen out of several bottles or picked up or even noticed, right? I mean, we might just walk by it on the street and say, that's garbage. But another person might mo notice that it's shaped like a perfume bottle and they get curious and they might pick it up. Yeah, so Mary Elena says maybe, for example, the fish one was sent out to the sea. Yeah, so maybe the form has to do with the content or the message you're trying to send, or maybe it says something about the culture that you live in now. So here's some examples. Perfume bottle. Um, this is an olive oil dispenser. So it's got that little olive oil tip at the top from Italy. This one's Peruvian. This one's just a water bottle. This one's, I think, sake. Um, baby bottles, obviously. And get this, these little cute little creatures. These are baby bottles. These are ancient baby bottles. The, oh, the, the mouth is the nipple. Isn't that the cutest thing ever? So think about your form. All right, time capsule. So a little bit of history of the time capsule. There's over 10 to 15,000 recorded time capsules around the world. And these are just the ones that, that people send in record of. There's probably, you know, a way more than this. It's very popular. Um, so a time capsule really is a cache, which is like a contained um, form with objects and information inside designed to communicate with future people. So educate, and it also can, but maybe not designed for, educating future archaeologists, anthropologists, and historians, people that write history down, record it, and compile it, and organize it, so it makes sense. Um, sometimes it's often buried in a cornerstone of a new building. So a cornerstone is um, usually like a foundational corner of that building, and that capsule will be embedded into that corner. World's Fairs, you might have learned about these already in your history classes. If not, maybe I'll share in some of our opening activities what a World's Fair is. Uh, family History, and there's some really sad time capsules out there too. Um, some around slavery and concentration camps. There's some Auschwitz uh, time capsules that have been discovered. And then pandemics, hint, hint. And historically significant political moments, hint, hint. Okay, so here's a couple of examples of time capsules throughout history. This one was uh, created in 1777, uh, discovered in a religious statue of Jesus Christ in Burgas, Spain, and it was containing a lot of different things, um, economic, political, cultural information, and it was all just written by this one chaplain of the cathedral, Joaquin Minguez, and it was discovered in 2017. This one, 1876, is called the Century Safe, and it was America's oldest planned time capsule. The iron safe contained a gold pen, ink stand, a book on the temp on temperance, the concept of temperance, collection of American signatures, pictures of President Ulysses S. Grant, and other pol politicians, taken by Matthew Brady, who was a famous war photographer. Um, the oldest known capsule was created by Paul Revere and Samuel Adams, hidden in a cornerstone, so there's that cornerstone, um, of a building constructed in 1795. Contained newspapers, coins dating back from the 1600s, and a silver plaque that read, this cornerstone of a building intended for the use of the legislative and executive branches of the government of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts was laid by Ex Excellency Samuel Adams Esquire governor of the said commonwealth. That cracks me up a little bit because, I mean, how many different titles do you need for yourself, right? Excellency, Esquire, Governor. <laughs> okay, um, this one is kind of neat. Uh, it's still closed. It still exists and it's still closed. So this one's called the Crypt of Civilization and it was created by Thornwell Jacobs, president of Oglethorpe University, and he says, quote, to preserve all of human knowledge for posterity. That totally cracks me up, very pretentious. 
to preserve all of human knowledge. So apparently all of human knowledge is preserved in this one time capsule. <laughs> in 1937, he converted an underground chamber on campus containing 640,000 pages of microfilmed books, text, television, toys, etc. And it was welded shut with the instructions not to open until 8,113 AD. So, I mean, that's just pretentious as well. The thought that this um, university time capsule would be uh, still in existence until the year 8,100. Maybe it will be. That, that'd be pretty cool. But, I mean, it's only 2021 right now. So, here, I'm going to hop up and get my light back. All right, so let's all just take a deep breath. Um, I appreciate you hanging in there. This is a long one today. Um, but there's a lot of you could just go down so many rabbit holes with this with the research for this you guys There's so much cool stuff um, If you're if you're a techie and you like tech stuff This one was discovered on the MIT campus and it was created by a professor And the neat thing about this one you can watch the video on your own time um, is that they designed the capsule to be completely um indestructible basically I mean it's glass but it's double paned glass and it's all blown shut and and pressurized so like there's no atmosphere in this capsule so that's really cool um, this one's kind of fascinating um, in 1972 the Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi uh, buried a time capsule and several time capsules actually not just this one outside of the gate of the Red Fort complex and she's scheduled to have it open in a thousand years. Um, but this, is re this was really controversial at the time because the contents of this time capsule were not revealed or shared with the public. And apparently it had India's history written on there. So a lot of, some people had concerns about this, what was written on this in this history and, and what was being buried to be opened again in a thousand years. Um, but in 1977, the Janata Party came to power and dug up the time capsule, removing the contents and replacing them with more historical accounts of India's history. So, you know, that's interesting too. And it's a good question to ask of any, any government, right? I don't know if our, our government buries time capsules or if a lot of governments do this. That might be interesting to research. But, you know, like, who gets to decide what, what our history is and what is, you know, the rewriting of our history? Who gets to decide that? So that is, that is a good question. If you're into space, you might like this one. The Rosetta spacecraft carried a micro-etched nickel prototype of the Rosetta disk. It was launched into space on March 2nd, 2004. And in 2014, it reached its comet. And in 2016, it landed on the comet. And now it's orbiting the sun. This disk contains 196,000 pages of information. So, you, and the neat thing about this is that you do not need technology to read this. All you need is a microscope, a high powered microscope. So, and again, what is written on this disk? <laughs> what, is, what is written on this disk? And is it, it's floating around space right now. So where is it going to end up? Um, we talked about this already. This is the MOM project, the Memory of Mankind project. Um, and this is a salt mine in Austria, Hallstatt, Austria, where you can send uh, pieces of your current life and history to this project, and they will etch it on a ceramic tablet and bury it in the salt mine. And if you send this into them, um, it has to be up to 3,000 words, they will send you back a token, and on that token is the GPS coordinates of the salt mine. And apparently there's thousands and thousands of these tokens all over the world, so they're hoping that in the future, if there's, you know, destruction and all, all sorts of stuff that could, that could mean that the salt mine could be lost, right? Um, that these little tokens will be discovered and that GPS coordinate will be found and this history will be preserved. Um, but the neat thing about this project is that it's a community project. It's not a, it's not a government saying, this is our history. 
this is a call to the community to write your own story and send it into them. So I encourage you to look into that. It might be fun to get a token, right? So your time capsule will be made out of clay, but the form can be anything you want it to be. It doesn't have to look like a traditional time capsule. But here are some, just in, in case you're curious. Um, a lot of them are bullet shaped, long and skinny, because they bury them vertically in, in the dirt. And some of them even have like a plaque that's on top that so you when you bury it in the dirt, that plaque is above ground, kind of level with the earth, and it looks kind of like a, a funeral, you know, tombstone, right? But it says like who made the time capsule and the date that it should be opened. So that's that's pretty common. Um, a lot of them are geometric, so I'm gonna teach you how to build something out of clay that's slab. Um, this one I just thought was kind of sweet. You know, it was made by a school, a school district, and um, it was obviously just plastic and sealed with tape or duct tape or something. <laughs> it was not going to last till 2096, but it's, I thought it was kind of sweet. So the question really is, what will your, what will be in your 2020 time capsule? So think about this year. What's going to be in your time capsule? This is a really interesting article. Um, this is a person that is considering this question and is thinking about all the things that were important in, that, in their life and what to add to their time capsule. So here's some new examples um, of some pottery, some ceramics, um, vessels throughout history that might inspire you. Um, these are some ancient Greek amphoras or wine bottles. Now with your form, you might not want to add any delicate things, like delicate sculptural things or delicate arms or handles, because those will just break off over time. So you might want to consider making like a pretty solid form. Um, this is a Peruvian fox warrior. This is a Korean bunchyong bottle, which is pretty cool. Um, kind of looks like a pillow form. You're going to see this in the bunchyong. Um, bottles are all shaped like this. Uh, so there's a lot of surface area on here for you to decorate and add your story. Um, with a bottle or a box form you make, you have to, you're going to have to make a lid, something that plugs it up, right, so that, that the moisture and all that stuff can't get in. Um, this is just a contemporary Korean Celadon glaze bottle. I haven't talked about this um, with Ceramics One yet, but Celadon is a, a really beautiful glaze that was developed to mimic jade. And it's, it's just a really shiny, transparent glaze with a little bit of copper carbonate or copper oxide in it. Um, and it's, there's a lot of different shades of this green, but they're all jade-like and uh, just gorgeous. You typically put on porcelain. Um, this is a Sarah Jaeger. This is a casserole dish but it might actually be an interesting time capsule. Uh, Mark Hewitt Pottery, thought this was kind of beautiful, very drippy. Um, some fun contemporary forms here. So you, you can glaze it and decorate it abstractly, but you can also take advantage of the fact that you're trying to tell a story. This one is a slip cast Coca-Cola bottle, but painted in a very traditional way with this cobalt different lids. I'm going to teach you how to make a form with a lid. It doesn't have to be symmetrical, right? It could be abstract. Um, I've seen this a lot in ceramics. There's, a, there's quite a number of artists out there that actually make urns for people, for actual um, ashes, people's ashes. And so a family would contact this artist and say, I'd love for you to design this, this urn that represents my, my person that passed. Um, and then that urn turns out turns into this beautiful sort of artwork that represents that person and then of course contains the ashes of that person as well. Um, and then different, you know, different types of lids and spouts and openings. For the people that want to make bottles, you might want to consider how are they going to get the message out of the bottle? Are they going to be able to, be able to pull it out? Are they going to have to break the bottle? How are they going to get the message? How are they even going to know 
but there's a message in the bottle. So maybe you have to, on the outside, you might have to say, there's a message in this bottle. <laughs> Get some tweezers or like break it, you know, give them some instructions. Okay, so I'm going to answer some questions for you guys and then I'm going to jump into a demonstration and then get you guys started on your actual design of your piece here. So um, I'm showing you these images here. I did a little bit of research on um, Indian boxes uh, mostly because you know you guys you know maybe we'll discover this in the future maybe think about your parents but when you when you the first couple of years of your child's life everything is kind of about that that child and and every, you just want to give them everything so i really just of course want to make this box for for beckett and um and he's indian of course so um i thought wouldn't that be amazing for him to open this up in the future or maybe even like his kids or his grandkids find it and there's there's a piece of his culture right there buried buried there. So I'm going to use some of these forms as inspiration um, and then we'll talk about um, what you guys are going to be doing here. And then he's, here's some resources for you if you're um, looking to dig a little further or just look at my references. Um, here they are for you. Alright, so do I have any questions? I know that was a lot. Uh, Nichelle says, I know where a celebrity lives. <laughs> I might ship it to them anonymously. That's, that's an awesome idea. Uh, that's fine. Mary Elena, that's fine. Um, James says, I heard um, they sent video game records. Oh, tell me more about that, James. Oh, into uh, space. I think it was in the 80s or 90s, uh, and they sent... I remember hearing this from my dad, so not an official source, but like, I think they sent like a golden record into space and some old Atari games and stuff. Oh um, man. Yeah, I mean, imagine like being like a thousand years from now and like landing on a, on a, on like a planet and there just being some video, old 80s <laughs> video games and just be how weird. Would you, how would you even play them though? I, I don't know, I mean, it's just it would i assume that technology would be so advanced by then that they wouldn't even like think they would be easy for somebody to just construct a video game device to play like on a gamecube or yeah. i mean those weren't in the 80s but atari consoles and stuff it would be wild yeah yeah i think that would be wild um nick says um there's been a lot of artifacts sent into space i'm pretty sure the record had a recording of the president at the time so yeah yes. so that's neat. So I was actually thinking about, um, I recorded the inauguration because um, I thought it was impactful. And I also, um, I just think it would be amazing to find a way to include that in my time capsule. And you know, especially like Amanda Gorman's speech. I feel like that was a really, I mean, poem. That was a really pivotal, pivotal moment in our history to, to see her up there reading that poem. So I would love to have that included in my time capsule. So think about the, the impactful moments from this year and um, how are you going to include those? Um, how much time do we have? So we have a lot of time for this project. We, we really do. The opening, the exhibition isn't for a couple months. So I'm, I kind of started you guys early on this because I didn't want to rush it. I wanted it. And I also wanted you to be on campus so that you could actually glaze it and we could finish it together. Um, okay. So, do we have any other questions? Um, okay, so I'm going to switch gears here and I'm going to do a demonstration. So you guys can continue to just kind of relax and, and enjoy the show here. All right, so if you want to follow along with me, um, you can open up this um, assignment. This is your research and drawing assignment. The first two sections here where it says message in a bottle that's purple and time capsule, these are the exact, oh, thank you, thank you. These are the exact same things that you um, that I talked about already in the lecture. So you can reread them. You don't need to answer them. They're just meant for you to ponder. 
um, and remind you of the things you should be thinking about when you choose. So at that point, you got to decide, right? Am I making a bottle or am I making a time capsule? Um, and then you're going to jump into some research. Research is just going to be a way for you to inform yourself. It's not going to be um, something stressful, okay? Your bottle um, form and the decoration and the contents all should have meaning to them. So I want you to just dig, dig a bit and find your own resources, right? So I've given you a lot with this presentation, but I want you to find your own and make this really personal. This link here is a list of recorded time capsules from around the world. So if you want to look at this list, it's not extensive, right? It's not all of them, but you might be able to find like maybe your country of origin or the country of origin where your ancestors are from, from and find some interesting examples there. Um, it, think about, you know, I was just right before, I wish I'd included this, but I'm going to include it in some of our Hello activities, um, you know, researching um, African American time capsules. So um, time capsules that have been sort of discovered, and I, I came across a couple of them that had a lot of like the, some of the very first African American publications or newspapers um, are really, really amazing and interesting um, artifacts to, to learn about the life of an African American person in a certain time period in the United States. So that, that might be fun and interesting to kind of dig into and learn about. So find your own personal history and ideas in this concept here. All right, so I want you to find five cultural or current culture examples of things that you might want to include in your time capsule. You could link them here, um, or you could take a screenshot of a picture, whatever you want, and just list them here, one, two, three, four, five. And then five, three, uh, find three examples of bottles or capsules that inspire you. So things that, the forms that you think are really beautiful and things that might you might want to try. Um, I'm going to teach you how to make a bottle using the coil technique. And I'm going to teach you how to make a, a, like a geometric type box um, using the slabs. So you have options. You can also do slip molds. You know, you guys have learned several techniques already. So you can do any of those. Um, and then your drawing is going to be full color, and I'd like you to have like at least two versions of your of your form, right? Maybe with the lid closed, and then maybe the lid open, or whatever you want. You know, it's up to you. Um, add color, add design, add your story to it. Take notes on your drawing. You could even collage things you printed out. Um, you know, maybe make a plan for what you're going to do with your sculpture. Um, and then I'll give you the rest of class today. You can start working on this now while I'm demonstrating the drawing. That's fine. Um, you'll have the rest of class today and all class period on Tuesday. Okay, and then on next Friday, we're going to look at what we turned in. So we're going to kind of do a share, and then I'm going to jump into the clay stuff. Okay. So, Andrew, I have a question really quickly. Sure. Um, so we're supposed to first off make a list of like five cultural or current culture references mm -hmm. that we could add in our design. Like what would an example of that be? Well, and I'm going to show you some examples in my demonstration. I actually have a bunch printed out. So that's a really good question and I'm about to answer it. 